if you use this simulator to practice and hone real-world skills, or maybe a pro simmer, or somebody who just enjoys digging into the data analysis of your flights, then this video will interest you. It's a newly released MyFS Flights, a detailed tracking and analysis package for your flight sim. This is the Sim Hanger. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching, and let's get started. There's so many different elements to this package, it's difficult to know where to start. And I won't be covering every aspect today. In a nutshell, it tracks your flight, and then reports on your performance, and provides the opportunity to focus on areas for improvement, via the supply of extensive data analysis, covering all different phases of your flight. To demonstrate that, today we'll do a number of flights, and then dig into MyFS Flights to see what it can do. For our first flight, we'll keep it simple. We're departing in a Cessna 172 from Toronto City Airport, and we'll fly a simple pattern. Initial climb to 500 feet, left turn, continuing the climb to 2,000 feet, then a descent back to runway 26. Here's a short edit of the flight. The way it works is you run a small desktop application in the background while using Microsoft Flight Simulator. This captures the data from your flight. The impact on your simulator is nominal. For me, it wasn't discernible at all. And then this information is accessed via a web application via your browser after the flight for you to peruse and analyze at your convenience. This is the home screen once you're in the app in your browser. There's a leaderboard which is based purely on the miles flown, a list of recent flights. Across to the left hand side there is a list of the flight plans that you may have drawn up yourself, and above that the most recent flight. In this case it was a flight from Stansted to Cologne. Bottom center is a summary of your performance in relation to average scores from other people on MyMS flights, and based on your most recent flight, other flights or routes that may interest you. Click the refresh button to reveal more. But what we're most interested in is the menu at the top and going back to our Cessna flight, we're going to select flights and let's see how we did. This reveals a list of all the flights that you've done with relevant details such as route, aircraft, distance, date and so on. The flight details we just looked at was the Cessna Skyhawk, so let's dig into that. Once I've selected that, we're shown a summary of both the departure and arrival conditions, and also a summary of my respective scores for the different phases of flight, shown in green. I can get more details by selecting stages from the top menu. And here it's broken the flight down into various stages, awarded an appropriate score with commentary. Here, for example, one of the lower scores is arrival final one, I've got a score of 76.9%. By selecting that, once again, I can dig into more detail to understand what was good or bad about that particular aspect of the flight. Here we can see I did pretty well on heading, speed and so on, but I got heavily penalized because my approach angle was 4.2 degrees as opposed to the recommended 3 degrees, which indicates I wasn't quite at the right altitude when I turned final. All that's well and good, but my favourite aspect of this app is the flight map. It brings the data alive. From the flight map, it's used the data to provide us with a detailed visual representation of our flight. Using the mouse's left and right buttons, we can rotate the map, and using the scroll wheel, we can zoom in. 
and as we zoom in more details are provided. And if we zoom right in very close, there's notes on various aspects or actions taken, such as lights on, lights off, flaps up, flaps down, and so on. And for any of the labels in green, for example, we can click on them to get further details. Here it indicates my heading was fine, gear up at the right time, but it seems to have penalized me quite heavily for too much of a bank angle. Not totally sure why that's the case, but nonetheless, Let's have a little bit more. Zoom out quickly. We can see the various stages of the climb. The actual pattern flown. Here I've clicked on the cruise. All good here. Again a report on altitude, speed and so on. Let's just have a look here to see what it said about the landing. There it is there. I'll select that. Overall score of 84% mainly penalized on the landing and flare profile. It was a slightly long landing, so fair enough. I'm sure you're getting the gist by now. I've gone back to my recorded flights, and I thought I'd put it more to the test by seeing how it would handle a bush flight, take off from an airport, and land on a sandbank in the Grand Canyon. Here's a quick summary of the flight itself. I'll be departing from Grand Canyon Village Airport, a grass strip, Kilo, Golf, Romeo, Yankee. I haven't made any special flight plan for this. And we're going to be heading directly into the Grand Canyon, dropping down and following the Colorado River, and looking for a suitable sandbank. That one looks good enough. And we'll be landing there. Let's see if it can track this. I hope it'll be gentle on the landings. Just to test the visual representation of the flight and the recording, I've just put in a sharp swerve. Let's see if it picks that up. Back to my FS flights in the browser. That's the flight we've just looked at, so we'll select that. And once again, we'll get a summary of departure and arrival, as well as overall scores. 85.8 for departure, 94.7 en route, and 84.5 for the arrival. As before, if we want to, we can get further details by selecting stages. And if we wanted to, once again, we can also drill down further and get details on that particular aspect of the flight. But right now, let's have a look at the map and the visual representation. That's our departure there. That's correct. But I'm interested to see if it picked up our descent. Yes, it seems to have done that. And also the swerve that we did. And it's picked that up perfectly. That's great. And let's have a look at the landing and see what it has to say about that as it wasn't at an airport, just on a sandbank. So we can zoom in to look for details. First of all, we'll have a look at the touchdown, see what it says there. And again, the details that we'll see will reply only to the touchdown aspect of the flight. Touchdown, it says, was at minus 427 feet a minute. Hmm, I thought I'd done better than that. It's marked me down for runway alignment. Not sure about that. There wasn't a runway but I'm assuming it's based on my initial touchdown heading and any variance from that. But what I'm really looking for is the bounce. Ah, there it is. Hasn't marked me down, but there is a comment, bounce during touchdown. Well, that's brilliant. This type of data analysis is going to be of particular interest to airliner pilots. Would be my guess anyway. So these tests wouldn't be complete without giving it a test. And for that, we're in the Phoenix A320, flight from Stansted through to Cologne, cruising at flight level 330 and an INS approach.
back to our app and back to our map view and once again we get a visual representation of our flight from Stansted in the UK to Cologne in Germany and once again we can reposition ourselves and zoom in as needed to find out the relevant details. Let's just take a quicker look at my landing in Cologne, check the various stages of final approach, that all looks fine, no problems there. Not surprising, I was on autopilot. Let's have a look now at the landing. Once again, that seems okay. Nothing of significance to report. And now our touchdown. A bit of a hard landing, 587 feet per minute. Ouch, clearly more practice needed on my part. And a slight bank angle of 1%. There's a fair amount of depth to this package, but we don't have time to go through it all. But here's a quick summary of some of the more highlighted features. From the flights option, we can select, for example, the takeoff report, and shown in linear graph format, we can extract further details. There is also a landing report, and we can have a quick look at the data there. Select landing report from the top menu, and we get details such as approach height, runway alignment, landing height profile and so on. Moving away from our flights menu, let's take a quick look at plans. You can import and export .pln files. So if you have a flight plan within Microsoft Flight Simulator, for example, you can import it into the app and the route will be shown on the map. If you select any of the flight plans here, it will immediately take you to the map view. Flight planning within the application itself is fairly basic and in reality only suitable for VFR. But if you do import one, it will show you all the details. To flight plan within the app, you select a departure and then an arrival and you get a straight line between. Any straight line in the flight plan will have a center point. You can select this and drag it wherever you want to and create multiple legs. Currently fairly limited functionality, but the developers indicated that Navigraph and Simbrief integration is planned for the future, which should significantly enhance this part of the application. Providing you have an arrival and departure point specified, you can at any time bring up the current weather for the destination and departure points. Quite a handy feature. From the top menu bar, we can also select Stats. And this will provide you a summary of the various statistics that have applied to the various flights that you've done on a collective basis. Not necessarily useful, but quite interesting, particularly as your database grows. Next to the stats option at the top menu is the help function. And here the developers done great work. Help is divided into easy to recognize sections, a lot of graphics to make it easier to understand, and nearly all the details are highlighted to make your knowledge and use of the app much easier. Returning to the top menu bar and selecting search provides you with a guide to find your next suitable flight. You can specify arrival and departure as well as many other parameters and then search. I've selected here Stansted for example, so all departures are from Echo Golf Sierra Sierra. That includes most but not all of the basic functionality of this application. MyFS Flights is offered in three different levels, Starter, Pro and Ultimate. The main limitation is the number of flights that can be recorded on an annual basis and you have the facility to take screenshots and add them to your flights. And again, there are limitations here for the Starter and Pro packs. The software is payware and it is subscription based, but you can get a free 14 day trial so you can try before you buy. The subscription costs vary from £9 per annum up to 29 So what are my opinions and views on this product? I'm very impressed with the level of detail and depth that this package can provide to pilots. This package will not appeal to everybody clearly, but for those that want to dig into the data, there are few, if any, other packages able to achieve what my FS flights can do. For that pro simmer seeking perfection, or for real world pilots wanting to hone their skills, there's a definite appeal here. The developer is very active with this product and has a relatively aggressive roadmap to bring more and more improvement into the application. And again, that's a positive development. Whilst the flight planning functionality is indeed very limited, this is not a flight 
planning package. That's not the main focus, but the integration of Navigraph and Simbrief will certainly aid development. This is a brand new package in the market, but I found very few bugs with it. Whoever beta tested this did a very good job indeed. But there are a few things that I don't like about this package. Firstly, the program auto loads when you start Windows, but I believe the developer will be looking at that so that users have a choice. I should be able to disable it easily if I want to without having to go to the taskbar, startup menus and disable. The other negative from my personal perspective is that it's subscription based. For what you get, yes, the monthly subscription for the ultimate of £3 doesn't seem a lot, or £29 if you buy an annual subscription. And £29 for this package? Well, it's a bargain. But next year, it's another £29, and so on. And that could make this package very expensive. I would like to see a one-off purchase option, perhaps an ultimate lifetime payment, for those that may prefer it. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon. And bye for now.